This is just a regular home, and we were asked to do a concept design of how it could look if it was all done in LID. So this, first of all, all of the plants are drought tolerant. So xeriscaping, drought tolerant landscaping, is one of the components of uh, LID. Because you're using less water, uh, that way the soil can absorb more when it's time for it to rain. So planting things up so that you don't need that much water is important. In this particular instance, you have a pine path that runs around in front. Underneath that path is a channel filled with gravel. And then the downspouts run into that, so the water flows in there and then holds and then soaks into the ground. The front flagstone path has gaps in the stones so that the water can flow in there. And again, there's a channel underneath that. That's called an infiltration trench. So if you didn't want a, a rain garden, if you didn't want a pond, then you can have an, uh, an evaporation, uh, an infiltration trench, and have it do very well. It kind of seems a shame to me because rain gardens are so beautiful. I like my water holding generally sitting on the surface. Although it's, it's useful to have all those elements. So you can see everything there in the design, the kind of pathway, uh, and you can cover these elements up. You can have rain barrels on the corner and so on. What we've done in the past is to have the rain barrel, and then there's a valve on the bottom, and a couple of days before it rains, you open the valve, and with us, we just run it into a drip irrigation hose that floats all the way through the garden and it slowly waters all the plants. So you make the best use of every drop of water that falls. This is a cottage, gravel pathways, so they're permeable. That's an evaporation pond. You'll lose about an inch a day and the rain just fills it. You can see that there are rain barrels up by the side of the house so they can hold water for you to water your plants and so on. Now, for you gardeners, the rain barrel is to hold water so you can water your plants. For conservation people, the rain barrel is there so that all the water doesn't flow away right away. You hold it for a few days, and then be a couple of days before it rains, you open it up and then let it flow out into the landscape. That's, that's their key reason for wanting you to have a rain barrel. Uh, it doesn't matter what your reason is, rain barrels are good. So we use, we use on my garden everything. Everything that you can use, it, we figured out about 95% of the raindrops get caught on our property and stay there. Uh, my landlord won't let me have a permeable driveway. I have that call if you're going to sell a house. Uh, so we put a channel at the bottom and then ran that into a rain garden, but it doesn't catch them all set. Uh, and again, a uh, high percentage of native plants because they're adapted to our local conditions and everything is drug tolerant. So even in the shade, you can have drug tolerance. People think it's hard to garden in dry shade. Go for a walk in the woods in August. The plants are fine. It just takes a little more to get them established, a little more care and attention. And you can even do uh, an LID landscape, a low impact development landscape, in uh, a formal setting. So permeable pathways with infiltration trenches underneath. You've got to get the water two to three meters, ideally three meters away from the house. Because you don't want water sitting against the house, right? No matter what, that's key. So you want to guide the water away and then have your infiltration areas or your evaporation areas and so on away from the house. So you can have an evaporation pond like that. You could also do that as a big gravel patio. So you've got a big sitting area there. And the hedges with little devil nine bark. So you can even use those plants in a formal setting. If you ever get a chance to go down to Nova Scotia, go to the Harriet Irving Botanical Garden. It's a formal, part of it is a formal landscape all done with native plants. Instead of boxwood, they use inkberry holly and so on. It's, it's stunning. It's even, I think it's even nicer because it's lower maintenance than a uh, traditional landscape. <laughs> know your plants, right? This is the challenge. Now, you guys are ahead of the curve because as gardeners, you love learning about new plants. In fact, that's the best thing about gardening is you'll never be bored. Every day, there's something new and amazing to learn. So there are all kinds of plants that love clay soil. A lot of those, actually, interestingly, are good rain garden plants. There are a lot of plants that love uh, having wet feet in the spring and super dry in the, in the summertime. So learning the plants and learning what plants do well in those situations is key. No matter what your goal is, learning what plants tolerate juggling from walnut trees, for instance. All of these are, are good things to, to do and to know. You can get really fancy with these things. You can get very expensive systems. and I. I Gardeners are cheap. Frugal, frugal, we're frugal. 
Uh, we don't like spending money where we don't have to. I know I don't, and you'll see some of my, my own grain garden features. This is way over the top for me. Uh, I, I prefer something more this style, and I imagine most people are gonna be in the same boat. So there are some beautiful rain barrels available now. Uh, Lee Valley sells some gorgeous ones. Uh, even if it isn't the most stunning thing, one of our, our friends, she's a teacher. So she got her big ugly rain barrel, and she got her students to put their handprints and paint all over it. And very cool, you know, you can have fun with these things. Gardening is supposed to be fun, and some of us get so twitchy and stressed about it. Remember that it's supposed to be fun. You're producing art. Are you supposed to get all grumpy about art? No, have fun with it. <coughs> Much to the chagrin of my landlord, we cut a hole in the eaves drops, we put a chain that runs down, got this old 1940s sink from a friend of mine, we raise the drain, we put a pipe to, to make sure that the sink fills up, and then it flows, once it's full, it flows down, and we built, we actually upgraded this, we built a big chamber underneath, and so that fills with water. And there's a pump in the bottom that pumps the water up through the faucet, so it just constantly recirculates. And that's, it's brilliant and it's fun. And then we just scoop water out of it to water the vegetables, for instance, and the new plants. So we minimize the water use, but we use the water that falls in an ornamental way. Um, a thought, before I forget, many people are concerned about mosquitoes in the landscape because they're concerned about West Nile. Now, first of all, there are 52 species of mosquitoes in Ontario, and two of them spread West Nile. Neither of those would live in a rain garden. They live in very tiny bodies of water, like poorly drained eaves troughs, old tin cans, old tires, and so on. Um, if you are a strong person, if you have a strong immune system, uh, I, I, I'm waiting for the doctors to tell you to go hang out in the swamp if you have a strong immune system. I'm, I'm out there trying to get bit, because once you've had that virus, you're good to go. It's a virus, it's never going to affect you again. Um, so, uh, with flowing, the other thing to remember is with flowing water, you're not going to have mosquitoes. If it's, if it's circulating, picture yourself in the ocean, right? You're swimming along and you're trying to dodge the waves and take a breath and eventually one of the waves is going to get you. <gasps> and down you go. These poor little insects, not, I bet you never thought you'd hear mosquitoes described that way. They're trying to breathe through two little tiny straws. So if the water has waves in it, then they can't live in that for very long. So. Uh, <laughs> A rain garden is supposed to drain in 24 to 48 hours, so that's not going to allow the mosquitoes to breed. And a, an evaporation pond or any water feature has flow, right? You should have flow, so it's going to have waves, so the mosquitoes won't be a problem there either. If you're particularly concerned, or let's say you had uh, a friend or a neighbor who was very worried about West Nile, uh, or just didn't like getting bitten by mosquitoes, I suppose that's what you're going to do. You can buy dunks that are a bacteria, Bacillus thuringiensis israeliensis, and it only affects mosquitoes. It's like a little tiny wet hockey puck, you throw it in the water, and that kills off all the mosquitoes in a very eco-friendly way. Um, just like there are, that same bacteria can be used to control uh, various different other insects like uh, microbes, for instance. 